Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's do that then. Welcome tonight uh, for the Art Stars. Tonight is a special one. Uh, last Sunday, Sue Papascu that you see over there. Sue Papascu uh, passed away and she was really the one who started the Art Stars. We are going to have something special for her later on. Um, first, we have to deal with the the shock and then we're going to pay our respect and you we have um, a memorial at the North Peace Cultural Center with flowers if you want to come that's where it is tonight we have Francis Obis hello how are you doing I'm great thanks pleased to be here so how is it with COVID-19 well, uh, to be honest, uh, my lifestyle hasn't changed that much. Um, as artists tend to be solitary creatures anyway. So uh, the day to day, you know, things that I do, um, practicing artwork and working in my studio, all of that is pretty much the same as ever. Certain things, of course, have changed. Like we don't go out um, in the evening. We don't. Uh, don't go see friends and all that, but um, there's other things, you know, fortunately, artwork provides a lot in times like this. Yeah, and I was wondering if a time like this will, will actually be good for creating or is it, it would be an inspiration or would be more like uh, working on whole project? Oh, it's um, times like this. It, with there, it is a great thing because um, there's no distractions. Um, we have to focus, um, and the atmosphere is very conducive towards focusing, pursuing uh, an art project, seeing it through to completion, um, even working on several things at the same time. It's uh, it, the atmosphere, the quiet, for me anyway, is a wonderful thing. So there's a lot of upsides. So something that happened that uh, COVID-19 and those restrictions, we had to close the North Peace Cultural Center, but we had to close at a bad time because soon enough, you had something planned. Tell us a little bit that's more right. about that. Yes, that's absolutely true. I was supposed to have a show opening um, on uh, April the 3rd. Uh, it was a solo show called Sky High, and it was to be opening in the uh, in uh, Peace Gallery North. Um, however, it couldn't be because um, uh, we we couldn't meet. Um, it was quite clear um, a few weeks beforehand that the event could not happen. Uh, so I decided to create an online show. Um, so all the paintings that would have been in the physical show are now online. And uh, there's uh, descriptions of all the paintings. My um, uh, statement for the show is also up. So all the material is there. So why don't you go and have a little look? So I won't see, I won't show everything tonight. But I will explain you how to go on that website and take your time to just Im immerse you in that uh, presentation. So here we are. So that is the website. And we'll go back to that later. So the idea right now is those are your uh, painting. And I'll take that opportunity to ask you a question and to tell and to ask you, please, can you tell me what I'm looking at? What kind of emotion you put on that painting? What are the things that it's represent for you? And also 
also because it's our stars and because we want to know what kind of difficulty it was for you to do that one and those ones. Absolutely. Okay, that, that, is, that painting is called uh, Prairie Twilight and uh, it measures 30 inches by 30 inches. Um, it was done on a piece of uh, birch. Um, birch is great to work on because it's so light. So it's, it's a great surface. Um, at any rate, as far as what the painting was about, um, it's actually a scene from Grand Prairie. Um, and I was looking out and towards, I believe, the airport uh, from a hotel window. And um, it was uh, sunset. Um, I could see pretty much what you see there as far as lights in the distance. Um, there were some beautiful, dramatic cloud formations uh, that were happening in the sky. Um, and I really loved the way this little ditch ran along the base of the uh, scene, which I could see from my window. And um, it, it seemed as the ditch retreated into the distance, it seemed to point towards the little lights that were the airport. Um, now, when I developed this scene, it, it actually took me a long time to work on this. It, I started with different ideas and I didn't come up with a way of, let's say presenting this, or a way of communicating this picture. I wanted to show the strength of emotion that I saw in those skies. Um, it's, it's a sense that you get in prairie skies a lot. Um, that's why I call it prairie twilight. But in, in the, when you have a flat expanse before you, you um, the, it can be very powerful when there's a, a sunset happening with um, a great deal of movement of um, cloud formations and the light slowly settling into the over the horizon. Um, there's a, a strong mix of warm, cool tones. Um, a variety of, of abstract elements that happen in the sky itself and some wonderful movement. And, and this is what I wanted to capture here. And uh, for me, it's very, it was very, a very inspirational kind of experience. Um, it had a great deal of impact. Um, it, it made me want to wait and see what was going to happen next. It was like a, a drama unfolding as the sun was setting. Um, the colors were completely, I don't know, it was, I did not plan it. Um, the blues and violets that have, that became the clouds, yeah, I guess it just happened as a, as in contrast to the warm peaches and oranges and yellows that were happening, um, in the horizon, but, uh, somehow the, the strong, the blues and the violets, uh, communicated <clears throat> that the strength of emotion that I, that I experienced watching this particular sunset. Um, it, it's like nature saying, I am powerful. I'm, you know, we should have done this yesterday on Earth Day. But, um, you know, it's, it, there was such a strong presence um, that the, um, the sky held for me at that time. So what did you do? Did you uh, took a picture of it? Did you just sketch I, it? I did on? take a picture. I took a picture of it, um, but it, as as usually, what usually happens in these with these things, I, the picture was not very good. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with when you photograph skies, it the, the, it was getting dark. So I don't know a lot. The main shapes of that you you see there. I do did recognize I did have in from the photo I I've worked from that but um, the colors the movement of the sky particularly the lower part of the sky it, it just um, worked off of intuition for that should we move on to the next room sure yeah that's a Charlie Lake scene. And it's another twilight scene. Um, it's another, it's a, I believe that one's called Evening on Charlie Lake 2, 
could be. Um, and with this one, I really enjoyed, it's from a, a scene where I did take pictures. However, what happened with this one, um, I worked off of the lines that I enjoyed watching of the, the landforms as they moved across the uh, the lower part of the, the scene. Um, there's an undulation to the, uh, uh, the landforms and um, the clouds seem to settle into those curves. And I, I enjoyed the way the, the water also um, created a sense of movement that um, was very harmonious with what the sky was doing and what the landforms were doing. So at, at any rate, it's a very um, magical time of the day in the summer, right when the, the sun is going down. Um, so I tried to create a little dreamscape, so to speak, um, where it's partly real and perhaps partly something that was imagined. That was yeah. my goal. You can see the, the reflection in the water that is quite nice. Yeah. Ah, <clears throat> we got stormy skies over Sweetwater Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lot, and lots of people should be familiar with this particular location. Um, it's um, Highway 97 and Sweetwater Road. And there's a lovely field right there. And uh, in the summertime, um, the canola grows there. At any rate, I was passing by one day and um, some storm clouds were starting to develop. Um, and I got some, there was some very unusual uh, forms happening. There was almost um, this monster type shape that was happening in the upper clouds. And uh, the way the, and this is an example of the kind of drama it, that we have in the clouds in this region, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, just before a storm, you get this tremendous energy. And it's almost like the sky is ready to just shout something. Um, it's so expressive. And this painting is quite small. It's only 12 inches high by 16. But um, I thought sometime maybe it could be bigger. I don't know. Um, at any rate, the, the gold colors and the violet colors to me really um, communicated the passion that seemed to be in the sky at that time. And um, there were a lot of twists and curves and um, oh, so much happening. Um, it's skies just before a storm like that. They do seem to hold a lot of a lot of power and um, you get that a lot around here. It's wonderful. Do you remember how long you spent to that particular run? On that uh, painting, how long did I spend? Yeah yeah uh, oh my goodness uh maybe three or four days yeah next one oh That's... that is the one we just looked at except yeah framed. it takes framing see that yeah. one is framing so let's move on is it the same ex yeah okay Okay, yes, this is um, uh, just off of 272 Road. And uh, I think it's called Approaching 272 Road. Now this one was done on um, black sanded paper, uh, not on board. And um, you can see the texture of the black coming through in places. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoy working on black paper for that reason. Um, the, I allowed the, uh, the skies to take on almost an abstract quality um, because the, the cloud formations really seem to lend themselves towards that. Um, now, 
I do a lot of allowing myself when I, in my work, uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> you have to be willing to make mistakes, you know, in order to make discoveries. Anyway, this is another um, yellow, violet, orange, blue um, color uh, harmony. And uh, it was a sunset, but um, a very active sunset. The clouds were moving. Um, the, uh, the upper part of the sky was had that uh, deeper blue and violet uh, with the oncoming evening. Uh, the ground was, um, the fields where I was driving were getting pretty dark. Um, but uh, to, around 272 Road and uh, Alaska Highway there, you, anywhere in that region, when the, the sun is setting, it can be such a magnificent sun. Um, and I just allow myself to look for, again, these abstract shapes in the sky and allow those shapes to develop. Um, so I've got some shapes in front and I'm was trying for that sense of distance. Um, and um, it's, again, an explosion of color, sunset. Very yeah, I, can, I can feel a storm coming with that, that sky. Yeah, and we got another storm coming here. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have a, yes, this is definitely a storm coming. Now, um, this one was called Storm Over Kempenfelt Bay. Um, and so we've, uh, we've moved now to a totally different location in the country. Um, Kemp Kempenfelt Bay is in Barrie, Ontario, central Ontario. And uh, that is where I used to live before I moved here seven years ago. Um, Kempenfelt Bay is great. The, uh, but there's a distinct difference in powerful skies there compared to here. Uh, you don't have the expanse that we have here, that, um, that sense that the sky goes on forever and ever. However, you have a great, uh, over the bay, um, there's a, there can be a great build-up vertically. Uh, so this was a vertical picture, so I, I don't think I've done any vertical pictures here. It's, since I, I left that area. However, right. three o'clock in the afternoon, you get all the clouds moving in. Uh, from uh, it, There was a totally sunny sky, uh, sunshine everywhere, middle of the afternoon. Then these cloud formations move in, uh, covering uh, the sunny, puffy white clouds. And before you know it, the water goes dark, the landforms go dark. And um, a, a really big storm did blow up, but this is just before the storm. <laughs> and uh, so there was a lot of movement, again, a lot of power in the sky. Um, I tried to communicate that through the, uh, the tension in the clouds, uh, opposing shapes, um, the, the light behind the darker forms coming in in front. Um, tried to get a sense of the the wind blowing up and what that feels like so this is not the only painting that you have in the exhibition so let me show you when you go on google you you go with francis Hobie. you have the first website and then here that's just the the page you have the sky high you have what and you enter here the exhibition, the virtual exhibition. And there you can see, so uh, on the screen, the little window is a little bit deformed. So you have to go by yourself, check it out and see everything and see how everything is doing. You have two pages and then you can go click on it and then you'll have a little diaporama and you have the price here and you have more info. And I think I remember, <laughs> It's funny, that one was one of my favorite too. Um, and I think um, if we if want you to click buy... on more info, you get, you get the, all, the, all the information, the description of the picture. 
and um, okay. other photos. Uh, there's photos of the, the work framed as well. Oh, and something very nice. I know it's on a lot of painting uh, website, but you have the room. You have, you yeah, can, view in a room. Sure. View yeah. in a room, yeah, you can change, you can put in your office or something. That that's tell, that tells you a little bit how, how big it is. So, yeah, we have everything um, up. I will take that away. And so, so that is your exhibition and we'll go back to our live screen. So this is uh, the live exhibition. So that's something interesting for you. Do you have any feedback right now? Or do those people already went to that website and contacted you? Do you know? Um, no, I haven't. Um, I haven't received any inquiries yet. Okay. Um, so, but I, you know, I do want people to know it's quite all right to make inquiries to ask about uh, purchasing. Um, everything is for sale, and you know, if it's not going to be deterrent to the physical show when that when we're may back. Um, you don't have to wait for the physical show. Um, pictures can be purchased now. And it'd be very good if pictures were purchased now because the, um, the food bank uh, gets a percentage um, of the sale. They get 30%. So the food bank gets 30% of the sale. That's a really nice gesture. Yes. So now we're going to go back to the usual and I'm going to ask you, who is Francis Obi? <laughs> well, I, um, I'm an artist. Um, I uh, sort of fell into it. I was um, influenced by my father, who was a cartographer, which is now a, a dead profession. Um, but he was also a, a painter in his spare time. Uh, my mother was an art teacher. Um, so I, I grew up with art as um, a very ordinary um, thing that I took for granted. Um, I was always doing it. People around me did it. Um, I didn't even think about it being about it professionally until much later in life after I grew up. Um, after I got married, had children, I, it was time to come back and think about it again because um, I missed it. Uh, so that's that's it. I am an artist. I'm a, a wife, a mother. Um, all my relationships equal who I am. And um, my relationship with art is, is certainly a, a, a very important part of my life. Uh, these days, I am exploring subject matter, which is around me. Um, I tend to look up. So hence the title of the show, Sky High. Um, I, I find a great deal of inspiration every day by uh, looking at the skies. And um, so that's who I am. I, um, I look for inspiration. I look for meaning in my life constantly. And I tend to find it in indirect ways. Um, I tend to find it through observing, um, watching what nature tells me and trying to communicate that through art. So is pastel your only way to communicate that? Do you have other, do you paint? Do you, I know you did collage? Yes, I've done a little bit of collage, um, playing around with different media. Um, I do work with acrylic paints also. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I often do an acrylic underpainting. Um, if you remember the uh, the painting called Prairie Twilight with the big blue clouds, the, uh, mm -hmm. the Grand Prairie scene, uh, that painting um, had a lot of very large brush strokes in it, uh, which I would not have been able to achieve if I'd tried to, to uh, paint the picture just with pastel from the beginning. So um, I did do an underpainting with acrylic paint um, with a large four inch brush. And um, that gave me a really nice basis um, on which I could uh, then add the pastel. 
which gave it the intensity of color. And so why pastel for the skies and for, for water? Well, um, it, the past, pastels uh, they have a wonderful translucent quality. Uh, for me, I, when I came back to artwork, um, it was around the time that my father died, it was around 2006, and um, he had left me his set of pastels, a set of Rembrandts. Um, so I started working with those. I really enjoyed them. Uh, just working with them seemed to come naturally to me. And um, so I developed skills related to the pastels first. And uh, that's mainly why. Um, however, I'm, I don't think I would be able to achieve what I do um, with any other medium because the pa pastels do, uh, it's, the effects are achieved by layering um, mm -hmm. and allowing previous layers to show through. And I, I know a lot of artists do achieve that uh, with paint. But for me, uh, the pastel has a unique translucent quality that I don't think I'd be able to uh, achieve in any other medium. Exactly. And so your inspiration, so looking up, can you tell, tell us a little bit more about that? And when is that moment that you say, oh, I am going to paint that or uh, this is going to be one of the painting? Ah, that's a good question. Um, I have found a lot of uh, material for my paintings. Um, when I've been riding uh, in a vehicle, uh, well, to be precise, motorcycle, mm -hmm. uh, that's where most of the work started um, that you see in the show. Um, and uh, that's why there is there are paintings from all over, not just from this local area. Uh, but when when you're riding a motorcycle, um, I don't know if you ride Batiste, but it you feel very much in, in touch with your immediate surroundings. Yeah, you have to feel very in touch with your immediate surroundings. You're right there, you're involved. Um, for me as an artist, I feel, I get to a point where I feel like I'm part of the landscape. Um, so I'm always studying, I'm always looking around me. Um, and there will come a time where I, I see something that uh, triggers sense of recognition something that um, I feel an affinity with, um, something about the uh, composition or the way, the way the clouds are formed or what's happening with the weather, whatever it is, it just speaks to me. And um, I, I'm, I take hundreds of pictures also when I'm, I'm riding and um, out of these, um, I will bring one or two from a time where I really felt inspired and out of those then, then a picture will, will happen. Um, often it's several photos that, that result in one picture. But um, otherwise it's same thing when I'm not riding, like I can get very inspired by going to watch a sunrise down at Charlie Lake. Um, there's just something about the way the sky speaks to me at any particular time. Um, often early in the morning or late in the yeah. evening, that is when the skies tend to be the most powerful. You know, when you it, it, you lose a sense of time um, when that happens. Um, you you feel like you have this direct communication, and um, that you are very much a part of your surroundings. That you're involved in your surroundings. You're not separate from it. And that's that's you. That's inspiration you know um so it's those times that usually result in a painting and so when you paint do you have a studio inside are you going outside how is it going to because it seems like it's really important for you to be emerged in the in the nature and in, in the subject basically so are you taking that feeling inside with you and then you you paint or do you have to go outside somewhere 
maybe around your house or whatever you know and oh i have i have the nature around me and that brings me those ideas i um i don't paint outside um i will sketch and uh, take photos um and i will observe but then i do most of my work in the studio so mm -hmm. my studio is a room in my house yeah um and um well by necessity those pictures that um were a result of motorcycle rides of course had to be done in the studio it's just that uh, is the way it had to work so i work from from memory and from photos in those situations um and um the memory you know it's a funny thing that happens with memory um it's you don't need to be there to see and remember and feel what you saw and remembered and saw and felt at the time um certain things do change through memory and through time mm -hmm. uh, for me often a little abstraction happens as a result of of time having passed by uh, but that's okay i don't mind i i like to work i like to end up with a scene that is non-literal so um yeah i i work in the studio um okay. i don't need to have it in front of me the scene in front of me to represent to to communicate what i'm trying to communicate in any particular picture Gotcha. So you still have the picture that you took that and you said that you can use maybe six or seven, five or seven pictures to just do one painting, right? Yeah, I often use um, several photos. Um, if I'm if I've been traveling, for example, in a in a region, in an area down a high, traveling down a highway um, in an area that I'm not familiar with, Um, and I really, really like what I see in front of me, then I will take a lot of photos. And uh, there's never one photo that gives you all the information that you need. Um, there's, there's always some, something else from another photo that I would, that I often, um, there's elements in, in several photos that I like to put together to create what I'm trying to create. what would be your uh, favorite piece the one you really maybe the one is still in your studio and you don't want to let go because it's never finished <laughs> <laughs> well i've got to say i um i don't have a favorite piece that i've got stashed away um <clears throat> the um the paintings that i've done recently that i like the best um tend to be i think they are the um i've done a series that are are ocean sky pictures um and they were a result of riding down the uh, pacific coast highway um and i really enjoyed pictures that resulted from looking out uh just at the water in the sky where there's no landforms um there's i found huge potential in those kinds of paintings um and i would i've got um i've got a black and white that that um i've done an underpainting of that um, um i'm looking forward to working with again soon it's taken me a long time and it's still very much an evolving process but um it's it's based on the ocean skies is um, it still pastel it's not pastel yet so no. far it's only acrylic paint <laughs> okay okay yes. so you said you were working on birch yes a birch it's um birch door skin it's it's just a very thin eighth of an inch birch it's mm -hmm. it's very lightweight so it's great to work on and uh, uh yeah why is it why is it great is it better than paper is it better than uh, the canvas It's, um, yes, it's better than canvas because when I get to pastel, a pastel layer on top of the paint, then I have to be able to frame it behind glass. Um, 
And uh, that means uh, when I frame, I, I don't use mats. It, with a, a picture that say 30 by 30, mm -hmm. um, I don't use a mat at all. Um, I don't like using that. So I, I put uh, what's called a spacer all around the edge. Uh, you don't see it, um, but mm -hmm. it lifts the glass off of the uh, painting by an eighth of an inch, which is just enough. Okay. Um, and uh, so when you've got the frame and the glass and <clears throat> all the other materials that go into the framing, um, it's nice to have the um, substrate as, as lightweight as possible. So that's why I like birch. I see. Yeah. I would never feel a, a birch. It's like the Jocond was on, on wood and it took me like, when I discovered that when I was a teenager, I was like, what? <laughs> on wood? <laughs> <clears throat> So kudos to the guy who tried to stab the jocon and didn't didn't succeed or stab the wood. Yeah. <laughs> so I am going to uh, ask you a couple questions, just simple answers, and what is on your mind. What would you be your favorite virtue? My favorite, I'm sorry, could you say that again, please? Yeah, your favorite virtue. Virtue? Mm -hmm. Well, um, <laughs> I don't think of myself as being terribly virtuous. <laughs> My quality, best qual quality. Yeah, quality, uh, quality oh, right. fine. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. That's got to be determination because um, there's a lot of failure that happens in artwork, um, you know, and uh, if you're the kind of person who gives up easy and says, nah, I've had enough of this, it's, it's too hard, then it doesn't work out. So I tend to have a lot of determination, which is very good because if I didn't, um, I would definitely give up because it's it's um, sometimes it seems like it takes forever. Sometimes you can go through phases where things just aren't working. Um, and you have to know that, OK, I'm going to go through this. Um, I'm going to see it through. I'm going to let it go for a little while. I know when I come back, things will be better. You have to talk to yourself this way. Um, and still, it can't, it's the coming back you have to have the ability to keep coming back and i think i have that quality so i guess that's way, what's made me hang in this long and keep so, working out. follow-up question what's your tactic when when things are getting a bit too confused or you you still like you're lost you don't know where to go do you just drop it and you'll go back later or is it something that you really have to concentrate and then maybe you focus on the picture and then go back and i have to finish it what's your method um well i i don't react really well when i tell myself you've got to do something <laughs> you know it, it's um i i tend to have to back off and uh, i put the picture against the wall so i can't see it I put it out of sight, out of sight, out of mind, right? Yeah. And uh, I go and do something else. Um, I try not to think about it. I'll just try to start something totally new, um, something that's nothing to do with uh, the issue I had, whatever that might have been. And uh, I found that I have found that I've done managed to make the break, put the picture against the wall, um, complete another picture, um, and then turn the picture back around um, a little while later. And then I suddenly see something that I didn't notice before. And yeah. I don't know why I never saw that, but there it is. And the solution eventually comes. Now, that doesn't always happen. Um, sometimes, uh, a picture I just decide to let go and I'll gesso it over and use it for something else. You know, this happens too. So you can't, can't be precious about work. If it's, it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. Um, give it a chance, give it a second chance. And um, if, it, if uh, a picture has been had its face to the wall too long, 
then I'll paint it over and do something else. Your idea of happiness. Ah, oh, happiness. Well, I don't, I don't think that um, happiness is a state of being. Um, reminds me of the Will Smith movie, Pursuit of Happiness. Um, it's uh, something that we can strive for. Um, I don't believe that there is, um, I'm, I'm not of the Buddhist persuasion, uh, there is no sort of nirvana. Um, but the pursuit of happiness, as Will Smith said, um, is is very valid and very motivating. And then once in a while, what we can get is times that I have experienced when watching a sunrise or a sunset or those little moments that seem to be in between the daytime and the nighttime when time seems to stand still. You get these little moments um, where you're not thinking in terms of time, of past, of future, of doing of anything but it's those times when time stands still that i guess you could call that happiness um because emotions are involved and it's always a very uh positive sense but it's also a, a sense of letting go and being involved in the moment i think those those times are special so having those times sprinkled along the way in a lifetime of Pursuit, I think, is great, and, I, and I'm willing to, to work with that. Yeah, your favorite painter. Oh, you know that changes as I go along. Ah, oh, the um, one I, right now, <laughs> today, right now. Oh, um, Wolf Khan. Um wonderful, wonderful uh, German-born um, abstract expressionist, but also just a wonderful landscape painter. Um, he was a pastelist, um, but he was also an oil painter. He died recently, which was very sad indeed. Um, and uh, he, he was, um, he, he spent most of his time, his, his life in, um, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, um, the Eastern States. Um, but the way he interpreted the landscape was incredible. His sense of color um, and what he saw in a, he did most of his work outdoors, but the, what he saw was completely interpretive. Um, and I am, I just, I'm just spellbound by, by Wolf Kahn's work. Um, he is, he's an icon for me. Um, in terms of what he said, he achieved in pastel, especially, but also in oils. What do you hate the most? Boredom. <laughs> um, yeah, boredom can be very frightening. Um, and uh, it doesn't happen to me much. Um, but uh, yeah, boredom can be a very scary thing. Um, when, when I stop creating, that can happen. If I'm having to do other things and um, I'm having to complete other tasks in my life that... Um, uh, don't require the kind of uh, brain work that I'm accustomed to um, and I, I can get bored easily in that for me that's bad so so I have two more questions the sure. the one now it's the natural talent you'd like to be gifted with oh the natural talent yeah I know uh, I wish, <laughs> no, I could be, I could tell myself, I could correct myself after I say this, but um, I wish I was the kind of painter who could represent what I saw 
easily and quickly without having to work at it. Now, I can kick myself and say, are you kidding, Francis? <laughs> um, there is no such thing. All of those people who you think, <laughs> who, who uh, look like they can do it so easily, they've been working a lifetime. And look at you, you've only been working since 2006, seriously. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I know there's, there's, there's there, but there are some painters who are genuinely gifted the portrait artists. I admire portrait artists so much who are able to capture a likeness like that is a very special gift. Um, I, I know there's a lot of mechanics in portraiture, but oh, I would, I would love to, to uh, um, have that kind of skill. And what is your present state of mind? My present state of mind, I'm, well, um, there's a thing that happens when you finish a show. Um, I feel like I've just put up a show. Well, I have. It's online. It's not, yeah. not the real show, but it's there. And I have a sense of completion now because it's there and it's done. And everything's framed and it's been presented. Um, I have a feeling that right now I am very excited about moving forward to the next thing. And, uh, I think it'll be something to do with ocean skies. Um, but it might not, um, you, you mentioned collage before I, um, I was working with, um, some aerial photographs, which I took myself, um, from flights I've been on and uh, particularly of this local area. Um, I got some very unusual um, compositions that happened as a result of looking down um, on the Peace region from the air. And um, I'm playing with those um, using multimedia, using collage, using paint, using um, a variety of media. And so I'm, I'm, I've done one, I'm looking forward to see how others might turn out, whether it, it can turn into a series or not. Um, but that, and also the ocean skies, paintings which uh, come from a place where there is nothing but the air and the water. It's the, the fluid elements that really uh, seem to stimulate my imagination. And, um, I'm looking forward to inviting more abstraction into my work too. Okay. Going further with that. Why is that? Is there a reason? Uh, a reason? More Abstra abstraction. Abstraction um, is a way of communicating the inner life of a scene. There is so much more than uh, if we're looking at a landscape. Uh, there's so much more to to a scene than what we see in front of us in terms of the physical elements of the scene. Mm -hmm. um, there is an emotional, a sensual reality um, which exists, which grabs us, uh, which is the reason why we, we want to paint that scene. Um, and uh, being able to interpret the emotional life of the scene, um, the uh, unspoken communication that happens between myself and the scene. Um, I know I'm sounding a little loopy here, but it, <laughs> um, it's, <clears throat> it's an inner life. We have an inner life. We have inner senses, which are very much alive. Um, I believe that the um, the skies, all of nature has, also has that life force. And I know a lot of other people believe this too. Um, I'd like to communicate that eventually uh, without the necessity of the physical form. And so this is why the... So that's where abstraction comes in. That's where abstraction comes in. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's thank you. It'll take me a while to get there, I know. Yeah. Well, keep us in the loop. Uh, for sure, we're going to be really happy when we'll be able to to go back. We don't know how. Maybe that would be only restricting the number of people in the gallery. But as soon as we can, you'll be on, the, on our walls. 
a I'm last word forward. yeah looking forward and a last word for us tonight well a bit i just really want to thank you for this opportunity it's You're it's welcome. been wonderful to talk about my work with you um and I'm so happy to see Sue's smiling face on the screen with us there. It's, it, it's great to have her with us and I would like to think in spirit. Um, at any rate, um, it's uh, it's great to discuss art. I always love discussing art and it's been wonderful uh, being able to talk to you about my work. I do appreciate it. Well, we really appreciate, we really appreciate the insight and we hope that if anybody has uh starting with a pastel and uh, feel something that would be able to reach us and we can link the link the two wonderful thank you very much thank you baptiste